Hello and welcome to another episode in the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena. Uh, for today's episode, we're going to talk about part two in our series on deep learning for object detection. Um, and we're going to talk about designing and training a YOLO V2 network in MATLAB. Um, now, if you remember from, from our previous video where we spoke about, uh, about pre-processing data and, and preparing data to, to, to get ready for, for, for the training stage, um, so now let's actually go and take that data that we prepared in in our in our previous video and and use it to actually uh, first design and, and then and then train a Yolo V2 network. So I've got Neha with me again. Uh, Neha is now a um, robotics arena veteran. I would like to call her. Uh, but uh, so let's let's get started. So so Neha, would you like to take take over and yes. and and talk us through what a Yolo V2 network is? Uh, so yes. So let's start. Uh, for this object detection network, uh, we will be using the YOLO V2. And uh, what is a YOLO V2 network? There, we have other detection networks, but the YOLO V2 is a ULOOK only once. And it's basically targeted for real-time processing images. And it gives the best results when we have the real-time images with okay. us. Okay. And uh, here we are working with our data set that have the real-time images. Okay. And and Yolo V two is is a is a network. I think I think the Yolo V three is, is is the next generation yeah, of it. Yes. But I've we've seen a lot of Yolo V two. I mean, we were at Robosub this yeah. year. We've seen a lot of Yolo V two yeah. being used there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, in in this uh, video, we will be going through uh, how you can actually design the network from scratch. Like we will be actually designing all the layers. So putting the layers together. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, so the. Uh, we will be referencing the YOLO 9000, the YOLO V2, the paper, and uh, we will be going through designing the network according to what is actually uh, the real YOLO V2 network is designed. Gotcha. And uh, so the basic uh, approach is we'll be having in input layers and some middle layers, and which will be having uh, convolution layers, uh, ReLU layers, batch normalization layers, and at the end, we will be having the YOLO V2 transform layers and the output layers. Okay. So are you going to walk us through how we assemble all these layers together? Yes. Perfect. So let's start with uh, input layer. Okay. So in MATLAB, we have image input layer function. And that actually uh, creates the input layer for us. And the input uh, for the image input layer is the image size. Okay. And uh, like how much do you need the normalization or not? So uh, I will talk about the image size here. Okay. Uh, b before you actually go to the image size, I, I know I know in our previous video, we, you know, we, we resized our, our data set yeah. to be 416 by 416 by 3. Mm -hmm. But I see 128 by 128 by 3 years. Yeah. So what is the correlation between those two numbers? Yes. Yeah. So in this uh, image input layer, 128, 128 by 3 means like what is the minimum image gotcha. size we are giving. So if we have a lower uh, image size than 128 by 128 by 3, it will not accept it. Okay. So and for uh, 416, it was according to the YOLO V2 network. Yeah. So, okay, so next uh, we will be going to the filter size. So, what, okay. uh, so in, in any classification of convolutional layer, we give the filter size, and the uh, size is generally by default is of uh, 3 and 3 height and width of 3 and 3. Okay. And it defines the local regions of uh, actually the neurons in the, within the input that we are actually working on. Next, uh, I'll be talking about the middle layers. So, uh, in the middle layers, uh, we are having a repeated batch of convolutional layers, batch normalization, ReLU, and max pooling layer. And uh, this is a very basic approach of what YOLO 9000 paper actually uh, told us to do. And uh, I put like few, uh, in YOLO 9000 paper, there are many layers, like I guess more than 50 layers. But here I'm putting a very basic approach of very basic layers. So we have four convolutional layers and uh, four batch normalization, four ReLU, and uh, three max pooling layers. And, and this this is, a, this is an important point that you raise because you know there, there are a lot of networks out there that can that can do what you want it to do, um, uh, but, but but there still is a motivation to sort of design your own networks yeah. because um, especially for, for for the kind of for the kind of work that that our audience are doing you know where they're putting putting these 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 deep learning models onto onto embedded GPUs where you don't have a lot of processing power yeah. you may want to use a smaller network at that point just so that it can it help you speed up your yes. your, your processing. Yes. So, and here, if you see that it's all, mostly the repeat, repetition of the layers, but the only difference is the filter size, mm -hmm. the channels that we are just doubling it. So this is also a very basic approach for any convolutional classification models that we uh, double the convo filter size after every pooling batch. So, okay, let's run this section and we will see that we have the input layers and our middle layers. And, and, and these are neural network, uh... Uh, new network layer classes, right? Yes. That's okay. okay, cool. 
Now I'll be talking about how we'll be actually combining the input and the middle layers. So for that, we'll be using a layer graph function that actually uh, takes as input the input layer, the middle layers, and gives us a layer graph object. And uh, we will be using that object further of creating the ULO V2 network. Okay. Number of classes is the size of the objects, uh, mm -hmm. number of objects that we are detecting here. So here we have the four objects. So mm -hmm. that is the number of classes. And, and you, you just have code here to identify this uh, yeah. programmatically, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so let, let's go ahead and, and, and run this section. Um, and we'll see that we should have a um, L graph object that's created here. Um, and if we click on this guy, we should see all, all our, our layers that we, we just assembled in, um, in, in, in MATLAB. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so let's let, let's jump back into it and, and yeah, you can keep going. So okay, so uh, the other important part, the step three, is our anchor boxes. Okay. So anchor boxes is a concept within a Yolo V two structure and uh, network. So it's kind of a uh, predefined bounding boxes, and it's basically around the size of the objects uh, with respect to the images here, image size. So and uh, the process of Calculating the anchor boxes is basically based on the using the method of clustering. Okay. And uh, you, you, I have given the code files here how uh, actually I have done that clustering method and calculated these anchor boxes. And uh, so the basic uh, whole approach here is that uh, it will give you the maximum possibility of the height and width for the objects that have uh, that are clustered at a certain region. Okay. Okay. So uh, what I'm getting in this discussion is that you're saying that the anchor boxes are tied to, 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 to the image size, yes. right, that, 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 that we're supplying. And in, if you remember from our, our previous video, I asked you what happens if I if I give it an image size that's larger than our specified yeah. size, which is 416 by 416 yeah. by 3. Um, I, I, I can now see that, okay, because because these anchor boxes are tied to that, uh, giving it a larger size would mean that our, our network would not be able to identify yes. the objects. Yes, that, that's totally correct. Okay. The anchor box is on your image size and the object size. You okay. change the image size, your your object size will change and your anchor boxes will change. Gotcha. So 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 you have to calculate this for every different kind of input image size that you're yeah. you're, you're supplying yes. to this. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So let's let's go ahead and and uh, and, and run this code uh, real quick so that we can register the anchor box variable. Um, and so this is this is the code that Neha was talking about about, about the, the the code that she used to actually calculate these anchor boxes. And uh, if you go ahead and download these files from File Exchange, you should find this code in there with you. Um, awesome. So next we're going to go talk about actually assembling the Yolo V2 network. So we I, I think up to, up till now we've assembled the the input in the middle layers, but now we're actually going to attach some Yolo specific yes. layers to this, yes. right? Okay. So uh, actually, uh, MATLAB has made it easier for us with this function of YOLO v2 layers. Okay. So this YOLO v2 layers adds the YOLO v2 architecture at the end of our layer. You can use those. So the layers are YOLO v2 transform layer, YOLO v2 output layer. You can individually add them or you can add them using this function. Okay. So in this function, what we are giving, whatever we have assembled before, the image size, the number of classes we have, the anchor boxes that we calculated, and the layer graph that we calculated. The last thing is the feature extraction layer. So I'm using here uh, ReLU4 as a feature extraction layer. You can use any network layer you want, but except for the fully connected layer. So, layer. so what, what what are some other kind of what are some other kind of feature extraction layers that so you can use? Any layer among the layer graph that you have. Okay, so, you so can it use, can be combinations uh, yeah, of 2D, yes, gotcha. anything, just not the fully connected layer. But we are not using a fully connected layer. But some people use a fully connected layer. You should just not use it as a feature extraction layer. Gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, so let's so, run this section and uh, we will also see the use of the analyze network graph here. Okay. So analyze network graph gives us this figure. It actually, it's a pretty cool thing that you can actually see, visualize the whole network that you have. You can see all the layers, their types, the activation weights, and how this whole structure is there. And here you can see that these are the final YOLO v2 layers that are added on their own with the function of YOLO v2 layer. Yeah, so so that's actually pretty cool because we have a one line function yeah. that, that's done all that yes. for us. And what I can also see in this in this graph over here is is our is, is our recurring sequence of convolutional, yes. um, ReLU max pooling and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. So, so, so this is this is, a, this is an, another cool feature that you can use to, to analyze your network. Um, if you stay tuned for our next video, we're going to talk about an an, an app to the, the, that you can use to to, to build yes. and, and edit network. So, stay tuned for that. Plug for the next video. 
Awesome. Uh, so uh, let's let, let's actually get back and let's see how we can how we can train this this network. So so uh, and we've gone to the stage now where we have an entire network built. Um, we, we we need to go in and, and train this network. Right? We want to tell it. Okay, we want to identify buoys and yeah. navigates. Yes. All right. So so let's 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 keep going. So as you say, uh, our first thing is like we have done the true training as false because this training the network took around many hours. Yeah, so we we, we don't want to keep you waiting for seven hours. So let's 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 just see let, let, let's see what 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 our what our training code involves, and then we'll actually load the detector that, that we ran on our on our GPU here. So uh. So so while training a network, we have to mention few parameters, few options that how you will be actually uh, asking the network to learn the stuff. So here, uh, it's pretty basic approach in the default approach. I am using the solver stochastic gradient descent and with an initial learning rate of 0.001 with a mini batch size of 16 and a max epochs of 80. So what is the significance of these things is it depends mostly upon the size of your data. And you have if you have more data, so initial learning rate means like how fast uh, your algorithm is learning. And I put it like very low. You can you can make it higher or lower depending on the time you want to spend on the training. And uh, your maximum epochs, I put it as 80, that it will the whole uh, the network will run 80 times, but you can actually make it higher. Uh, but it's all like it all depends upon your network size, your image size, your data size. And uh, the other part, important part is the mini batch size of 16. So it's like how much, how many batches it will take in one iteration. Okay. And uh, I put it at 16, but uh, you can actually lower the size also. The, mo the, the more the things you put it as lower, it will take like more hours. And uh, But here I uh, kind of played with that, and this is where your validation data set plays a role. Okay. And because you play with your parameters during your validation set, and uh, you can test all your parameter thing that which suits best for a network using the validation data set. Okay. You said that, that that these parameters sort of tie to how big our data set is. Now we did not have a very large data yeah. set. Like we yeah. had like maybe about three thousand odd yes. images. Yeah. So it, well, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure when you're actually using this for, for your applications, it probably won't take as long to train because yes. you can chain, play around with these parameters, but also you will have la you know yeah. larger amounts of yes. data to, to deal with. Uh, I, I see I see a couple of couple of more f um, sort of options in there. One is the the dispatch in background option, and the other one is the execution environment. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yes. So so this, these two are based on your hardware on or your computer on which you are actually running your algorithm. So the execution environment here, I put it as auto. So automatically it will takes uh, it will take either it's a CPU or a GPU machine. Yeah. But few machines sometimes have a multiple GPU or they want parallel computing to go forward. And these all help in uh, running the training network faster. Okay, so you so, can scale it up to yes. clusters, etc., and stuff like that. So if you are using the execution environment as multi GPU or you are using the parallel computing. And then comes the role of the dispatch in background, and it's true it will use a parallel computing power. If not, then it will not use it. Okay, cool. So and and, and this is good because because you don't as, as a developer you don't have to really uh, do a lot of stuff to make sure that you're running it on on a multi yeah. GPU versus a single GPU. It's just it's just a another option that you add into the yes. training options. Awesome. And then, and then uh, at, at the end, I can see that we have the train YOLO V2 object detector function. I'm guessing that's the one that actually trains the network, because yes. um, the name is very uh, is very eloquent, yes. so to say. So to this function, we are just giving our training data, at the whole network, the layer graph that we actually had before, and the options that we decided. Perfect. So. Uh, yeah, we are also linked to the training options document where you can actually play with more document, more type of options that you actually want or you want to play with in your in your data set. Okay, so cool. Why, why don't we go ahead and, and we will run through this section, which is basically just going to run this um, this last line of code, uh, which is going to load in a detector that we well, it's it's a, it's a detector that, that, that we trained with yes. this code, which is that we trained it earlier. We don't want to have you sit through our training process. Uh, but, but let's go ahead and run this. Um, we should see a detector YOLO2 object created here. Um, and as you can see right here, so so what we have now is is a train detector that we can use to see if we can identify our objects of interest or not, right? Yes. So uh, let's let's go ahead and, and, and run this next section of code, which is um, basically what we're doing is we, 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 we're, so our data set is a collection of a lot of images, um, and we're just gonna step through all those images and and, and view that through a, through a um, uh, deployable video player. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this real quick and um, 
and and we should see that our, our detector is able to identify the nav gates um, in 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 our data set. This is also going to give us a bounding box. So if, when when you're trying to when you're trying to connect this to your control algorithm, um, you can say, okay, this is this is where in my image this particular object is. And as you see, as 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 our submarine sort of goes a little bit ahead through the uh, through the nav gates, you can see that's able to identify those um, those buoys as well, and, and it's able to to distinguish them. I think I think that, that's a pretty remarkable yes. thing because um, what you remember is that this data set is all underwater, mm. so colors don't really look like colors yes. anymore, or they, they don't really look the way that we want it to look. So so that's great. Okay, now that we've finished stepping through our our, our entire data set, um, let's. Um, let, let's go ahead. So we, we've we've visually seen that that our, our our detector is doing well, right? It's you know it's it's doing what it's supposed to. Do. It's able to identify all, all the objects of interest. Uh, but there has to be some some numerical ways in which we can yes. we can uh, we can uh, you know sort of decide how good or how bad our detector is, right? So do you want to talk us through what some evaluation metrics are for this yeah. detector? So on uh, for this like uh, for object detection, MATLAB have few functions for detection uh, for evaluating the metrics and the plots. So we have two uh, basic uh, functions here that I'll be using is evaluate detection precision and evaluation de detection miss rate. Okay. So with the precision function, we are seeing how precise our our network is for each uh, class, and uh, we will be plotting those uh, the recall and the precision uh, things, and the other the detection miss rate is like it should be lower. So less the miss rate is it's better and it is we will the output that we get from the detection miss rate function is uh, the log miss, miss rate to the false positives we have per image okay. or and per object so next uh, if we go down and you run this step you will see the uh, plotting of uh, i just plotted for every um, object that we have and with every precision and for every miss rate so if you see here that Blue is the nav gate, and it gives a precision of 95% and a miss rate of like just 0 0.05. And uh, the other you can see is kind of lower, and but it all depends upon your size of the data. Yeah. So 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 we we had we had a lot more images of the nav yes. gate than we had of the buoys. Yes. Uh, so and then that sort of reflects in, in in the way it's run. Yeah. Another parameter that I want to talk about is 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 the value of threshold. So um, detection precision and miss rate are being calculated as um, as the intersection over union of the of our actual inference results uh, as compared to our ground truth. So if uh, if, if you have a, a lower threshold, what's going to happen is that we're, we're basically telling our our evaluation functions that yeah we're okay as long as as long as there is a, a, a smaller ratio of overlap between between the the ground truth and our inference results. But as you see, if I the moment I increase this, it will change our plots um, significantly. Okay, so as as you can see now, it's it at, at a threshold value of 0.8, it's saying that we're actually missing a lot more um, than we should, um, and our precision, which was you remember 95 for the nav gate earlier, has now dropped to 40. So as as you can see, you know this uh, your your um, your metrics are definitely a very relative um, uh, it's the very relative factors. You want to keep in mind what your system can handle and not, and when 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 evaluating your detectors, right? Awesome. So we're um, we're, we're we're now through. Two parts of our of our yes. deep learning for object detection mm -hmm. video series. Um, um, highly recommend that you'll stick around for part three, which is talking about importing networks from from other environments yes. like TensorFlow or, or PyTorch or whatever whatever other environment you're using um, to pull pull that network into MATLAB and then and then use MATLAB's training functions to train. All right, so um, stick around for part three, um, and in the meantime, again, you can get in touch with us through our um, our our Facebook group or our email on the screen and and don't forget some of the other resources that we have available for you. Um, see you around soon.